live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Microsoft Ignite. Brought to you by Cohesity. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite here at the Orange County Convention Center in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We are joined by Param Cologne. He is the Chief Product Officer at UiPath. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you so much for having me. For coming back on theCUBE. Thank you. So, I, I, I was just at UiPath with you in Vegas a couple of weeks ago, and the UiPath tagline is a robot for every employee. The Microsoft tagline is employing, empowering empowering every employee to be a technologist, empowering citizen developers. Does it strike you that the, the, two, the two missions are, are similar in their way? That's, that's absolutely right. I think we have so much in common, our companies together, uh, and I think we're working very closely together in not just our technology, but also in what we're trying to achieve, which is to make people achieve more. You know, amplifying human achievement is a core mission of our company, and very excited that Microsoft sort of shares the same ambition. Yeah, it, it, it really does uh, connect with me. Satya this morning talked about that 61% of job openings for developers are outside the tech sector. And, and of course, uh, UiPath is, is really trying to help business productivity overall uh, with, with everything you're doing. Absolutely, and productivity is where we focus our technology primarily on. In fact, a lot of our focus is around how do we actually get people to do more with less time, so they can have more time to do the, the, the things that they can do with the creative parts of their time, as opposed to doing the mundane parts. So yeah, productivity is, is really important to us as a company, that's what we think about every day. Yeah, could you bring us inside the, the relationship with Microsoft and UiPath? Yeah, so we're deeply partnered with Microsoft since day one. We've, most of our technology is built on Microsoft's uh, stack on .NET. We run, our database is all run on SQL Server. Our cloud service uh, runs on Microsoft Azure. Um, so we are very deeply partnered. We've helped Microsoft build um, a lot of AI services around document extraction, the form recognizer. We're one of the first customers uh, that we work together with Microsoft and Chevron on. So we have a very deep partnership with Microsoft. Okay, so let me ask you a question actually. As a customer of Microsoft, you know, why, why, why everything built on Microsoft from you know, the, the .NET through the infrastructure as a service? Why, why, why did UiPath choose Microsoft? I think it made a lot of sense. Microsoft's focus on productivity, Microsoft's focus on enabling developers to do stuff quickly, uh, and it also helped that a lot of uh, the founders, uh, myself included, uh, came through uh, with Microsoft, with a lot of experience with Microsoft, so I think you know, part of that helped as well. Does it help or hurt when you are then pitching your services that, that, it, is, that it is a much more Microsoft-focused company? Um, so I think we've grown over the years to actually have a much broader ecosystem. So we have more than 500 partners now. We work with Google. Google um, is a customer, it's an investor. Uh, it's also a very deep partner. A lot of our AI services are building on it uh, with Google. We're deep partnered with AWS as well. Um, so I think we're working with all the way our customers are today. Uh, but I think we're, we, we still have a very close relationship with Microsoft given our heritage and given where we started. Yeah, I actually, I, I went to the UiPath Forward event last year and had not realized how deep that connection was with Microsoft. Uh, yeah. I see UiPath across all the clouds. So there's a little mention of RPA that this morning in the keynote, uh, the, the Power Automate uh, solution coming out from Microsoft. Of course, everyone seems to have uh, an RPA out there, uh, you know, all the big software houses out there. T tell us what this means in the marketplace. Yes, listen, RPA is a very fast growing market. It is the fastest growing enterprise category today. And when you grow so fast, it's good for the business, but also attracts attention. Uh, I think getting somebody like Microsoft to sort of say that we're in it as well, um, only helps sort of solidify the foundation, solidify the category, and brings a lot more um, you know, credibility to this category. Um, so I think we're, we're excited to have Microsoft here as well. And in terms of, as you, as you were saying, you're, you're two companies that are very much focused on workplace productivity, employee collaboration, and being able to be more creative with the time that you have. How much is that cultural alignment, how much does that help your partnership? Um, I think it helps a partnership a lot. So, you know, when we, for example, when we meet with the office team, um, they think deeply about, you know, helping people do more with less time. You know, we think about the same things as well. So if you notice some of the newer products that we've launched, 
are very deeply integrated into Office. In fact, we do a lot of inspiration from products like Excel um, to be able to say business people that are able to you know, do some very sophisticated, complex business models in Excel should be able to do similar stuff with their products as well. Um, so we continue to work with Microsoft in a you know, cross collaboration across those teams. Uh, and I think in general our message, we have a coastal relationship with Microsoft. Um, so when Microsoft brings us into opportunities and it closes, uh, it actually retires Coda for Microsoft sellers as well. So I think all of that alignment really helps. Um, We'd love to hear, you know, what what what, what joint customers, uh, you know, what brings customers to UiPath at a show here. Uh, what what are some of the key drivers uh, for uh, their discussions that you're having this week? Yeah, so I mean, uh, we've got, uh, you know, through through the years, we've got over 5,000 customers that work with us, large enterprises, you know, very large banks to companies like Chevron. Chevron, in particular, is one of those customers. Um, you know, that's a very, very deep customer of Microsoft, but also a very strong customer of ours. And in a, a specific use case at, my, at Chevron, while Chevron wanted to extract data from their oil field service rig reports, they were getting more than 1,000 oil rig reports coming in every day with about 300 pages per average per report. And somebody had to manually go in and physically you know, read those reports, put them into that SAP system, so that you could predict if there was a prevent, preventive maintenance repair that was required. You know, working together with Microsoft, we were able to take a service that Microsoft was building an AI called Forms Recognizer and, and uh, take it to pre-beta and alpha with the customer so that Chevron is now able to have all of those reports read by UiPath robots and automatically punch it into you know, the SAP preventive maintenance uh, application so that you can actually ship the engineer on site before you notice something happens at the old rig. So I think that's a pretty cool scenario. Another, another similarity between iPath and, UiPath and Microsoft is this customer obsession, and this is something that you talked a lot about at UiPath Forward, this spending time with customers, learning how they would use RPA, and then also right. thinking, thinking ahead of them and in terms of how they could use RPA. How do you work with customers and Microsoft together at, in partnership, and in terms of how do you find out exactly what their needs are and the, and the joint solutions that you could provide? Yeah. And then that's a really good question. Um, Microsoft has been very obsessed with, with, you know, with driving customer obsession in all parts of the organization. We culturally have a really deep obsession about working closely with customers. And I think, um, so that Microsoft has uh, MTC meet the customer sessions around, around the world. Uh, and we work closely with Microsoft to make sure that our technology can be showcased by Microsoft people in those MTC sessions so that when customers come in, they're able to not only see Microsoft's technology, but also our technology, and if they're interested, then our sales teams work collaboratively together to make sure we can you know, have joint sessions and, and planning and working with customers. So, I, I had a chat earlier this year with your CMO, Bobby Patrick, talking yeah. about uh, how AI and RPA go together. Uh, you, you own the product, so right. you know, will AI be able to allow RPA to get into more complex configurations? You know, give us where we are and you know, what, what, what's new in that space. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, like the first wave of RPA was all about taking sort of structured processes, you know, deleting data from Excel sheets, reading data from APIs, and be able to process it in different systems. Now, the humans don't always work with that. 10% of what we do on a daily basis is structured data, right? Spreadsheets and stuff. 90% of what we do is reading spreadsheets, extracting information from papers, um, responding to um, you know, chat conversations. All of that unstructured information can now be processed by AI algorithms to be able to extract the intent of the chat conversation, to be able to extract the data that's in that unstructured document that we just received to be able to use computer vision to detect what is on the computer screen so that you're able to detect that control, whether it renders the browser or it renders in a you know, Windows 32 application or that. So AI brings the possibility to automate a lot more complex processes within the organization, um, you know, mimicking sort of more human-like behavior. So the robots are not just doing the numbers and structured data, but be able to process unstructured information as well. Yeah. Will the AI help at all trying to understand what can I automate? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and that's the other piece of being able to use process understanding capability. So what we've done is we build capability that's able to follow 
human activity logs and how people are using systems, but also how the databases are getting updated by different applications and be able to mine that information to understand how work is getting done in the enterprise and be able to understand what are the scenarios and possibilities for automating more business processes. And that's also one of the key benefits of how AI and process mining can be, can be applied in the context of, this, of uh, RPA. There are so many product announcements today on the main stage. There's an 87-page book that we, that we were sent from the Microsoft comms team. What, is it, yeah. what are some of the most exciting things you've seen here today? I think I'm really excited about some of the innovation that Microsoft is doing in the analytics stack to be able to report on the, the, you know, the, the, the data warehouse, but also big data together in one stack. I think that's really powerful. That is something that our customers have, have, have been be, be very interested in because robots process structured log, but also unstructured logs. I'm also excited about some of the AI investments that Microsoft is making. I think um, some of the AI capabilities and are really coming to practical use. I mean, a lot of companies talk about AI for a long time. We've applied AI practically in, in our technology, but I think a lot more technology is now available for us to be used in, in our products. Okay, uh, Parm, there's a recent acquisition, I believe Process Gold was the company. Right. Okay, tell us a little bit about that and what, what, are, what are the plans for that? that, that Absolutely, so Process Gold is, is a company that's uh, you know, based around Germany and Eindhoven in the Netherlands. Uh, and this is the company that was focused on process understanding or process mining. So essentially what they had was they had connectors to different line of business applications and be able to sit and study logs of how work was getting done over long periods of time. So what happens is if you went to a line of business owner and you asked them, what is your process for procure to pay look like, or order to cash look like, chances are they'll draw you a straight line and say, here's what the process is. However, when you look at how work is getting done, it's typically not a straight line, and depending on how many variations you're looking at, you can get up to like, you know, 15 or 20 different variations of the same process being done. So what Process Goal does is identifies what are the different ways in which processes are getting done, identify where the bottlenecks exist in the process, right? How long is the step one, how long is the time between step two and step three? Right, is that taking 25% of what the total time is? And is there a way to optimize that process by eliminating that bottleneck? And once you've optimized the process, it also gives you the ability to go automate that optimized process, right? You don't want to automate a process that is suboptimal. Do you want to go understand the process, see how work is getting done, optimize the bottlenecks, and eliminate the bottlenecks, optimize the process, and then go automate that and process go it really helps us sort of cater to that need, which is go automate you know, the best possible way um, to optimize the process. In terms of Microsoft's use of things like AI and ML, ML, we have not really talked a lot about ML here. I mean, it was mentioned on the main stage, but not a lot. How, I mean, what do you, what do you think the future holds in terms of Microsoft in the next <laughs> five to 10 years? Yeah, I mean, I think I see Microsoft investing a lot in data. And, and really being able to um, get all kinds of data because ML is useful only after it's able to reason over tons of data. And uh, Microsoft is you know, rightfully investing in the data repository and stores so that it has the ability to store that data, to process that data. And once it's got the, the data and the data assets over it, then it's able to go create the algorithms that can reason over data and, and create that stuff. And I think that's really exciting because Microsoft has um, a lot of the horsepower to be able to not only store that data, process that data efficiently so it can be used in machine learning and AI. Great. Well, Param, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, pleasure to have me here. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite.